everyone. My name is Danielle and I work for the Dixon Gallery and Gardens and today I have Kristen Allen with me. Hi guys. And today we are going to be making a really fun art project with you inspired by camouflage in nature. We call this project our camouflage critters. And as you can see, the materials you need are not that much. You just need two sheets of paper, some scissors, and something to draw with, like markers or crayons. And then if you would like, you can get some glue or some tape, but we don't really need that. That's up to you. Before we get started with the project, uh, I'm going to walk you guys through um, just some really cool information that we found about different animals using camouflage in nature. So we're going to learn a little bit of that together. There are actually four different types of camouflage. So the first one is something called concealing coloration. This is when an animal hides itself up against a background that's the same color. So in the example in the picture, you can see we've got a snowy owl and it matches the white snow behind it. So if that owl were to land somewhere in that snow, it'd be kind of hard to find it, right? Another one is disruptive coloration. So this is when an animal has a pattern across its body and that makes it hard to see where the animal starts and ends. So if you look at this example of the zebras, we've got this big group of zebras together and they're the lines all kind of blend together. It's hard to tell where this zebra ends and this one begins, right? And that can be really confusing for a predator like a lion. And also um, animals out in nature don't see the same colors that we do. So it's even more confusing for the animals than it is for us. The third type of camouflage is disguise. This one I think is my favorite. This is when animals or insects blend in by looking like an object. So this example here is the orchid mantis. So it kind of looks like a flower, but you can see here's the head. We've got those little arms here, like how a praying mantis would have. Here's his back legs. Um, but having all the, the outer look like a flower makes it confusing and a predator wouldn't come to find it. Um, the other example I've got listed, there's a walking stick. So y'all have probably seen that before, where it looks just like a stick. And our fourth one is mimicry. So mimicry is when an animal tries to look like another animal or insect one that might be dangerous or that tastes kind of bad. So in this example, we've got the owl butterfly right here on the butterfly's wing. This kind of looks like a large eye for an animal that would be much bigger, like an owl. So if a predator were to see that eye, they might get scared and think that this is just part of the animal's face and they would run away before they realize it's the butterfly. And so, what we're going to do now is look at some different examples of different kinds of animals and insects that use camouflage in Tennessee. So the first one we're going to look at is a katydid or a leaf bug. Now what type of camouflage do you think this insect uses? Is it concealing coloration, disruptive coloration, disguise, or mimicry? I'm going to give a few seconds for you to guess. And this one, if you said disguise, you are correct. The reason it's going to be disguise is because it's disguising itself to look like a leaf. The next one is the Viceroy butterfly. And you can see we've got the Viceroy butterfly tries to look like a monarch. The reason a Viceroy wants to look like a monarch is because monarch butterflies in the animal world are famously bad tasting. No one wants to eat those. And so by looking like a vice, or by the viceroy looking like a monarch, uh, the animals will be confused and think this insect, this butterfly is going to taste bad if I eat it and they'll avoid it. So what kind of camouflage would this be? And if you said mimicry, that's correct because it's mimicking a monarch. And then we also have a bird called the American goldfinch in Tennessee. This one's really interesting because it changes colors depending upon the season. So in the winter, and the goldfinch looks like this brown color. 
And in the summer, it's got this lovely yellow. So what kind of camouflage would that be? If you guessed concealing coloration, you are correct. And one last one. We've got the Chuck Willis Widow. Now this one's really interesting. We've got that kind of maybe a pattern across the body. So what kind of camouflage would this be? And if you guessed disruptive coloration, you're right. And then just for fun, we've got some pictures for you to try and spot the animal. We'll just give you a few seconds and then show you where it is. So see if you can find an animal inside of that photograph. Sometimes they're hard to find. Look really close. So that was actually one of the birds we looked at today, the Chuck Willis Widow. Here's another one. Can you spot the animal? A little hint, look at the grass. This one is a cheetah. You can see him hiding in the grass. Okay, can you spot the animal in this one? All right, if you're having trouble finding it, look under the tree. And it's actually an antelope. And here's another one. This one I think is my favorite. See if you can find this animal. This one is a giraffe. Looking so cute, hiding behind the tree. And our last one for today, take a good look, see if you can find it. If you're having trouble, look to the left side of the picture. And it is a parrot. Now that we've learned a little bit about the different types of camouflage and found some in the wild, Miss Kristen is going to lead you through a really fun activity to create your own camouflage critters. So we're going to go ahead and get started on our project. So like Miss Danielle shared with you earlier, you're just going to need some paper, some scissors, and something to draw with, like some markers or crayons. If you have some glue or tape, you can use that too, but it is optional. All right, so let's get started. All right, guys, grab your supplies. I'm going to start with just a piece of paper and some markers for the first step. You can make your paper landscape or portrait totally up to you. The first step is to just draw your pattern all over your paper. You can do whatever pattern you'd like. I've got some examples here at the top of the screen for you, but feel free to invent your own. The most important thing is to just make sure your pattern covers the whole page. pattern is finished, I'm going to start working on my critter. I like to make an insect, but you can make an insect, an animal, or anything out of your imagination. Because I want my insect to pop off the page, I'm actually going to cut out the body separate from the wings. This will allow me to glue those two pieces together and fold my paper so that it becomes 3D. If you're adding your wings on separately from the body of your critter, I recommend placing the body on a piece of paper and drawing the wings behind it. This will make sure that your wings aren't too small once you actually place it onto your paper. Next, cut out your wings. Glue the body of your insect to the wings. Next, decide where you want your critter to be on your page. You can put it in the middle or turn it off to the side to make it even harder to spot. Once you've decided where to place it on your page, you're ready to decorate. You're going to try to make your critter blend into the background as closely as possible. So you're going to try to replicate the pattern that's behind it. 
Look at the colors you've used and the way your lines go to try to make it blend into the background as seamlessly as possible. I recommend putting a little piece of tape or even a dot of glue in the middle of your insect to keep it from moving around because once it changes positions, it's really hard to match it back up. But that step is really optional because part of the fun and challenge of this project is trying to make your lines match even after it's moved a little bit. If you decided not to glue your critter down earlier, you may want to add a dot of glue now to keep it perfectly placed on your page. Or you can leave it loose and let realigning it with the marks you've made be an ongoing challenge. Lastly, you can fold the parts of your critter that are loose from the page to give it a 3D element that pops off your art. Hey friends, thank you so much for making art with us today. We hope you had fun. We'd love to see what you made. So if you want to share it with us, you can actually use the hashtag Dixon at home and tag us on Facebook or Instagram. We'll be able to see your artwork. We'd also love to see you visit the Dixon Gallery and Gardens. Our gardens are open right now with social distancing practices in place. So you can actually go and visit the gardens, check out some of the nature, maybe even see some insects that are using camouflage to blend into their surroundings. So thanks again for making art. We hope you had fun. Hope you have a great day. Bye. That was a weird thing for me to say. Like, I don't like it. It felt weird. I don't want to see. I don't want that. <laughs> Try one more time, and then this time I won't be weird. I promise. Ah. Uh. In this one, we actually have a cheetah. Is it a cheetah? Ah! Uh! Chuck. What is it called? What is this animal? Did we determine antelope? I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> All right, no, I'm gonna start over. Yeah, I it's feel a... like the the cheetahs look cuter. <laughs> this one's actually a cheetah. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again.